it's interesting if you look in that history, there was only three pesticides that even recommended adjuvants. And then as that period began to change and the stronger chemicals were either banned or discontinued, we started accessing a lot more prescription-oriented pesticides. The big change was they were designed to do their job and disappear. And all of a sudden, variables like coverage and water quality and evaporation begin to have a direct impact on how well these materials would work. And so you saw the industry start to recommend, suggest, or even require the use of what were called spray adjuvants to offset some of these problems. And Helena was uh, in a great position to uh, develop a line of products to accommodate this trend because we were already somewhat a leader in it, not, and not really by intention, just happened to be there with products like Agridex, Induce, uh, Buffer PS, and they were sort of our foundation, so to speak, to build a, a lot of products to accommodate the new technologies that were coming. I like to make the statement, there's nothing more constant in the universe than change in Agridex. It was the same formula when I walked in the door in July of 77 as it is in 2019. There's been no changes to it. But it was interesting in that uh, we were able to take that and we learned uh, beyond just using it in a application setting, how to expand its uses. I think that what gave us the strength to do that, the ability to do that, was that direct contact with the grower and applicator in the field. That's something that's very hard to reproduce in a laboratory setting. We could take their information, their needs, their observations, and then take those into the laboratory. And from there, a whole host of products, actually 80 different spray adjuvants, has came out of that original start with the product Agridex.